Hey, welcome back to Tool Talk. This is the second part of a video series for lockers and gears. Um, this isn't even gonna cover the actual install. We'll get to that in a little bit, but I wanted to get you an idea of what you need to get ready for your gear install and locker install in your Jeep Wrangler or Jeep Gladiator. Um, what I have on this episode is the front and rear ring gear. I wanted to show and break down a little more detail because when I first got um, uh, away from my, my TJ or my JK, the third generation of Dana 44s made by the Dana Corp, Spicer Corp um, axles are uh, very unique in the sense that they I redesigned some things and I wanted to cover those to kind of give you a little more detail as to the differences and why these gears and others will not transfer in and out of JK axles or uh, previous TJ Dana 44s. Um, the differences are, uh, there's a lot. And so what they've done is they've called it the Advantech axle and this is the, this is the 2018, 2019 and now 2020 Gladiator Jeep series of axles. Um, these axles are also found in the Titan Dana 44 in the back of a Nissan Titan. I found that very interesting when I was shopping for the parts, um, but uh, that's just for just kind of gee whiz. So let's get to it. The front and the rear ring gear differ in size. They now call the Dana 44 the M210 and the M220. There's a lot of confusion as to why they did that. Um, the biggest one is the M, normal M226 Dana 44 that you hear. Although these ring gears are slightly smaller, like the rear gear is six millimeters smaller, they're actually just as strong. They've um, identified that they hold just as much uh, torque load and they are rated at the same amount of foot pounds of torque um, for their, before they're you know, deemed uh, that they break or their uh, damage will occur. The cool thing is they try to lighten these gears, for one, for your gas mileage, which is great for overlanders and guys who want to try to get that little bit of extra gas mileage out of their Jeep. Um, don't laugh about the gas mileage of a Jeep. It actually does matter, and uh, people who dismiss that, I don't, I don't agree with you. I think people who really like to take their Jeeps off-road and go long distances, um, you know, I've traveled Africa, I've traveled uh, the Pacific, and especially my Aussie friends, um, they have the huge Outback, and when you're moving down the road, a lighter gear and can be a good thing. And so gas mileage is funny that uh, us Jeep guys normally don't care. If you're going from uh, you know, your workplace, you know what kind of vehicle you have uh, for gas mileage. But that was the idea behind the design of why our ring gears are a little bit smaller. Um, but they were able to redesign. So this is the rear gear. It's slightly larger than this one. Uh, this is a 220, this is a 210. So there's a 10, 10 millimeter difference. I don't know if you're gonna see that in the camera. If you overlap them, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of, a little bit of space. And the difference is, is minimal, but they're still Dana 44 and they're still rated at the same string. So on this, the curve of the actual gear teeth are um, arced to a greater extent or a greater degree. And what they've done here is they've given you more teeth contact on the pinion. And these pinions are monstrous. I am uh, wear like a size 12 glove, I'm 6'2". I'm, not a huge guy, but I'm, you know, uh, with holding this, this thing to me still feels massive. And um, they um, increase the size of the uh, bearings at the pinion, the pinion head, and how they contact uh, have a greater degree of arc in them, so that when they were machined, so your axle is sitting, if I'm looking at it from the rear axle, looking forward, your pinion's coming off your drive shaft to here, and then you have to work to get those to line up in the axle, right? Well, that um, cut has to be very precise. And these things are just, they kind of doesn't, it's hard to do them justice. They're incredibly heavy duty and they're really well made. These are, these are all Spicer parts. Um, don't let the Yukon branding uh, fool you on some of these gears. Uh, the, if you look at where the, where the gear actually has the, they've embossed or they've, punched the serial numbers into the gears and, and, the, uh, and how many teeth they have. That all is Dana, Dana Spicer stuff. So these, these are Dana Spicer gears, but
but the Yukon bearings and the Dana Spicer bearings, which I both have right here, the Spicer is the more, more of the hardware part of the Dana Axle Company. The Spicers actually are the same Koyo USA made bearings that Yukon uses. So whatever you're buying, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I like Yukon, they make good stuff. Um, or I like, you know, Dana Spicer parts, they're OEM. Whatever it is, they're all made to the same spec and they're very well made. Uh, even one of the pinions here has a zero uh, tolerance on it, meaning that when this thing was made, there's no, uh, there's very little error to where it's positioned at. Uh, so in the install, you'll just subtract that number from the one you take out of your axle, and that's, that gets you where your pinion depth is and gets you close. Uh, so this was really neat is that um, they're making these things really good, that they're, they're, at, a z they're at a zero, which is it's kind of rare. Usually they'll say something else like this one, for the rear of the axle. Uh, the rear axle has a zero, uh, 0.19, so 19, uh, 19 thousandths. Um, that, uh, that's kind of normal to see that there is a number there. It doesn't mean they're not proper, or they're not set up, or they're not made to a higher spec, but they are, uh, they're, are they're, you know, they're telling you where to start, which is just great to, be, to begin with when you're installing gears. Uh, I also noticed that on these gears, they, bevel the edges for the contact pattern to be smoother, less noise. Uh, this is a Dana, Dana Spicer, I can't speak to the others. I've, I've installed Yukons in the past, but um, being younger and in a hurry, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention. Uh, so these look absolutely incredible. These pieces are all smoothed and they're uh, incredibly well made and I'm excited to, to get this installed. Uh, but you can see that's the rear and that's the front they're incredibly overbuilt. And this is in the Gladiator. Um, you will find the Dana 44 Rubicon in the JL Wrangler to have these large pieces. But what's great about the Gladiator is you can buy a regular sport, the lowest model, entry level model, and you're getting this stuff. You're getting the Dana 44. So I'm really excited about that. that I bought a Sport S because I didn't want the Rubicon. I knew I was going to build it. I was going to put lockers in. I was going to do rings, and get ring gears, and um, if you like to uh, build, you're going to love the sport. And if you're new at this, I think you're going to find out that the aftermarket is huge for all gladiators, not just the Rubicon, which always seems to be the thing is the Rubicon usually gets the good stuff because they're more expensive. But anyway, the uh, front axle now uh, in the same respect is um, reverse cut. So when you look at the, when you look at these, I don't know if you can see that. Um, one's going clockwise and one's going counterclockwise. Why is that? Because the front axle is high pinion and the high pinion um, allows the, the reverse gear cut. So they, uh, that's why when you buy gears in the past, if you notice Dana 44, you had to buy the Dana 44 reverse cut. That's why that is. That's just gee whiz. On these axles, they're all Dana 44. The front's gonna be the reverse and the rear. They're gonna tell you exactly what you need. If you buy a 210, you're getting the reverse no matter what. Buy the 220, getting the correct gear no matter what. So I don't want to confuse you because there's a lot of numbers in there. What you just need to know is that when you buy the front axle gear and ring set, they know that's why it's a, called an M210. That's why it's for the front specifically. The um, bearings in here are really well made. I, I like that they use the Koyo, the Koyo brand. Um, if, it's, if, it, if it's a particular um, style of bearing, it's made in Japan, um, and they all are, or if it's made in the U.S., it'll stay at the U.S. So they're, uh, the carrier bearings here, um, or I'm sorry, the pinion bearing is Koyo USA made, and then there's the seals and everything you need. Um, that's the other piece I want to talk to you about. So for people who are just getting into this, when you purchase gears, there is so much to it. You really need to be well educated on what you're getting yourself into. When you buy gears, you're not just buying the, the gear set for two, I think 230 is the lowest. I've seen these, 299 is typical of the new gears. You're not just buying these gears. When you buy the 299 gears and get your front and rear axles, I've got, you know, I've got my gears from my front and rear. All you have is these four parts. So that's just getting started. You need to go ahead and spend that extra 100 to $200 for the, for the bearings and the seals, the bearings and, the, um, and the, also the bolts, the, the ring gear bolts. Um, because these are all brand new parts, they have a little bit of um, anti-seize on them, and 
also when the gears are getting installed, you want to heat them up a little bit to fit over the carrier because there's going to be, they're very, very tight tolerances. We're talking about that, you know, the thousandths tolerances here. So that's three zeros to the right of the hole number. Uh, so if you're going to order gears, this is, this is a brand new guy talk here. Order your front and rear M210, M220, and your in master install case. Because whoever's installing your gears, whether it's you or somebody else, you're gonna want those extra shims that I showed you with the locker. They're little shim packs that allow you to set the locker in the diff and move it around to get it perfect. And then that also helps you line up your gear, uh, your pinion, and your ring gear. So, gears, install kits, gonna roughly run you 800 to $1,000 for just this stuff here. The locker is gonna be 899, and if you get the uh, the new kit that's coming out, I've got something in the works right now for a 35 spline shaft rear. Those extra shafts are um, a few hundred dollars each, and then they come with um, set 80 bearings. That's the bearings on the outside of the axle are beefier to handle to bigger tires, and that kit is going to be a whole other video. But you're looking at like about a thousand dollars to do just the hardware for the install, and then whatever your shop's going to charge you. The locker and the ARV air compressor, uh, this setup right here, if you just wanted to do the front or rear air locker, and maybe you have an LSD, I have an LSD in the rear, but we're gonna go ahead and replace that with the locker as well. This is uh, 899 and then your compressor is another two to 300. So about 1100 here and 1000 here just for one locker. So we're looking at $2,100. If you wanna do just this rear locker with your stock shafts, now you're up to about $3,000 out the door. So you can literally take your sport Jeep that you purchased for $33,000 or 36 if you got the Sport S and add about $3,000 worth of parts and you're already stronger than a Rubicon. Um, that's not knocking the Rubicon, but people buy Rubicons because they're already done and you can drive them out the door. These are 48 gears, they're deeper gears than a Rubicon, they're stronger, they're, uh, you're also getting this incredibly well made ARB air locker that has a better engagement. Um, and does not break like the e the e lockers do on the on the Rubicon. Not my words, but that's that's from people who are actually breaking them on the trail. And you can get into this and get into a stronger than Rubicon Jeep. Just something to think about when you're when you're buying a truck. Get the Sport and then upgrade it for about three grand, and you're going to have stronger axles than the Rubicon. Um, the Rubicon's a great truck. Don't get me wrong. I would have loved to have started there, but island prices kind of kept that from happening and me being a do-it-yourselfer, I knew I was already gonna upgrade a bunch of stuff anyway. So the axles are both Dana 44s, front and rear, and on the Sport, Sport S, Overland, and the Rubicon, they're all Dana 44s, 32 spline. The widths are different, and the axle tubes are slightly different, um, but for like just simplicity's sake, they're almost all identical. It's just the shafts are different, and. When you're ordering parts, you don't want a shaft that's just slightly too long or too short because then they won't fit the axle correctly. So you do have to pay attention to what Jeep you have, but for strength's sake, um, you can't convince me that the Rubicon's any stronger than a Sport S. It's just not. So um, I'm gonna wrap this one up. I think there's just so much to cover. I just wanted to make these series of videos kind of short and sweet to the point. Uh, and then we're gonna get into why uh, why you should or should not um, upgrade to any of this stuff, or is this something you really need or don't need? So thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and uh, stay tuned for the next uh, part of this series.